Over 130 years ago, a Marian apparition occurred in Knock, Ireland. Tonight, we'll learn how that event can strengthen our faith today. So please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And welcome. I'm Father Mitch Packer, and welcome to EWTN Live, our chance to bring you guests from all over the world. And we've gone farther than usual uh, for tonight's guest, so uh, we'll meet, introduce you to her in just a few moments. First of all, I just want to mention that today is also the feast of St. Clair of Assisi. She was born around 1194 and died in 1253. She became an early companion of St. Francis of Assisi, leaving her family and the wealth that she had back at her home, as well as the chance to marry. She left all of that behind in order to follow St. Francis. And she founded a convent of sisters uh, right next to San Damiano Church. Uh, You can still go to visit it. I've been there a couple times myself. And she made sure that she and her sisters paid close, close attention to poverty. And they even when the popes tried to get them to own some land to get some money off of it, they said no. She's also the patron saint of television. And it's a wonderful thing that it was a poor Claire nun of perpetual adoration who founded this Catholic television network, Mother Angelica. So we celebrate this great feast of St. Clair, and also the great work that one of her daughters, Mother uh, Angelica, has done for us. And hopefully we'll be able to continue on doing that as well. All right, now tonight's guest comes all the way from the land of St. Patrick in County Mayo on the west coast of Ireland. She's the United States and Canadian representative for the Marian apparition site known as the Knock Shrine in Ireland. So please welcome tonight's guest, Donna O'Connor. Donna. Thank you so much, Father. Welcome. Thank you. So good to be here. Good to have you here. Thank you, Father. Now, you're not originally from Ireland itself, no, are Father, you? No, Father. I was, uh, I was uh, born in Canada. Canada, but and now you... I spent a lot of my life in Ireland. So yeah. you've got a mixture. I, I can tell from your accent, there's, there's a bit of the Canadian, but also a little bit of the Irish is rubbed off. Mid-Atlantic, Father. Right, there you Mid-Atlantic. go. Mid-Atlantic. Yes. Wait a minute, that's all fish. Oh. No, 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 I'm not part of the Atlantic. But uh, the, it's great to have you here. And you, you do a lot of work at NOC? Uh, I do. I've been involved in NOC Shrine for quite some time. And then um, when I was coming to uh, do some work in Canada, um, I had a meeting with the, uh, Pat Lavelle, the manager of NOC Shrine, and he decided that it was time to look into having an office in North America because so many of our pilgrims come from North America. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. And, you know, one of the things about the Shrine of Our Lady of Knock, I mean, a lot of people are quite familiar with the miracle at Fatima mm-hmm. and the shrine at, at Fatima. And, mm-hmm. and, of course, the, the song of Bernadette, the famous movie, mm-hmm. uh, made Lourdes very well known. Yeah. But there's not been a movie yet about uh, what happened at Knock. Mm-hmm. So... You're here to tell us. You'll take the place of a movie. Yes, Father, I think it's time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Irish are uh, known for keeping these things to themselves. So I think maybe it's time that we really started to uh, look into this. Sounds good. You, but uh, you, why don't you start to tell us, uh, you know, what happened at Knock that led to building a shrine there? Okay. Well, um, now at this time, at the time that the apparition happened in Ireland, there was... Which was a, what year? 18, uh, 1879. There had been, as, as you know, a, a terrible famine in uh, 1945 to 47. There had been very ter- a very serious famine. The population of Ireland was cut in half. 
uh, people died, people immigrated on the coffin ships. A lot of these ships were not seaworthy and sunk. Uh, so there had been a lot of pain and a lot of starvation, disease, and terrible uh, suffering in Ireland. Uh, now, in County Mayo, this continued. There was um, a second famine which came uh, shortly after the apparition that happened in Knock. Now, on the wet evening of the 21st of August, 1879... Well, why do you say it was a wet evening? Oh, well, because my, my impression is that a lot of the Irish weather is sort of wet. Yes. By Irish standards, this yeah. was wet. We say it's soft. We say it's a soft day. I if see. It's, but this was lashing. This was a very heavy rain. So and the, this, it's very important to, the, to understand the, the kind of the conditions. Uh, it was a wet, the wet evening of the 21st of August, 1879. Our Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, and St. John the Evangelist appeared at the gable end of the parish church in Knock. They appeared in a blaze of heavenly light. Um, the, and uh, behind them and to the left of St. John, there appeared an altar, a plain altar with a cross and a lamb on the altar and adoring angels around the lamb. Now, uh, our Blessed Mother was in the middle, St. Joseph was to her right, and St. John was to her left. And to the left of St. John and back some was the plain altar with the Eucharistic lamb and the adoring angels. And this appeared on the gable end of the parish church in Knock. And by Eucharistic lamb, you're referring to the lamb being yes, one of the blessed Lord. representations of Christ. Yes, that's right, yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, so this uh, apparition appeared, but well, what was said? There was nothing said, Father. Um, but then our blessed mother didn't say anything on Calvary. Uh, our, our Blessed Mother was there to support and show love and support to the people who were suffering so desperately. Uh, there was a, a lot of things going on at the time. I, I touched on some of them. There was also land, ag land agitation. People were being thrown out of their homes. Battering rams were brought down to throw the people out of their homes by the landlords. Um, so there was a terrible suffering. And this was the, uh, the atmosphere and what was going on at the time in County Mayo when our Blessed Mother and the St. Joseph, St. John, and the Eucharistic Lamb appeared. So in the midst of that terrible suffering, this is a silent apparition, but it's there to be a, a comforting presence, it yes, sounds Father. like. Yes, Father. Okay. There's always been a very, very deep and profound love and devotion to our Blessed Mother in Ireland. Well, how many people saw this apparition? There were 15 witnesses from age 6 to 75. The apparition lasted two hours, and these people knelt in the mud and recited the rosary for two hours and gazed at the apparition. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, was there any investigation of this by the church? Yes, Father. There have been two commissions. One is, was in 1879 where uh, the 15 witnesses were all uh, interviewed. Um, they gave sworn testimony. Fifth, 14 of them gave testimony in English, one in the Irish language. Uh, it was found to be um, reliable and a solid um, um, the, the, the evidence was solid. It was reliable. And each person who was interviewed separately gave the same testimony, had seen basically the same thing. Which, if somebody's making it up, it's hard to have 15 people tell the same event. Yes, Father. You know, Especially children. I mean, these people saw what they saw. And, and it, when they talked to the children, they gave their information spontaneously. There was no deviation uh, well, maybe slightly, because some people would look more. Maybe they said, well, how far were, were the figures off the ground, say, a foot? And somebody else might say, well, maybe a foot and a half. Oh, I see. But, you know, so, uh, but the, the uh, witnesses were considered to be reliable. And uh, it was certainly, um, there was no reason to disbelieve what they had said. Well, given that... Um you know, what's been the result of this apparition? How have the Irish responded to it? There was a, oh, I forgot to mention, there was a second uh, 
Commission in 1936. Oh, yes, yes. And after giving her one of the witnesses, so the, witness, the witnesses that remained, there were, I think there were two in Ireland and there was one in the USA who, re, who were still alive in, in 1936. And one of the witnesses who gave her, her sworn statement in 1936 was uh, Mary O'Connell. And she said, I am clear to what I have said. This is after her sworn statement. I am clear in what I have said. And I make this statement knowing that I am going to stand before my God. And she died within a year. So, so, so she's, she's sort of putting on the table that, you know, her testimony as being something that she has to answer to uh, God yes. for. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So then, uh, the, back to my other question, how has this affected the Irish? You know, what, how did this affect the religious life of the church in Ireland? Um, well, for many years, it has been a, a, a very, very uh, popular and uh, devotional area for the Irish people. Um, every year we have uh, more than a million and a half pilgrims come to knock. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, and the, the core of the pilgrimage to knock is the uh, sacrament of penance, the Eucharist, and the anointing of the sick. Okay, so, so the, the, it's a sacramentally oriented kind yes, of shrine. Yes. Are there many healings that occur there? Yes, there are. Um, there have been, always been healings um, and cures. Maybe some of them would be, um, some of them would be kind of uh, people changing their, their lives. Sure, sure. Um, there, uh, there is one, one cure that is being um, investigated now, um, but uh, that happened, say, maybe 20 some odd years ago. But um, it, uh, Knock has really produced a lot of, of uh, very positive uh, spiritual journeys for people. Um, it's not, unlike some other uh, Marian shrines, it's very uh, simple. It hasn't been commercialized at all like some of the others have. Um, a lot of the area where, where the apparition took place is still the way it was at the time that the apparition took place. Um, there's parts of the, uh, the different uh, houses that people lived in at the time of the, the terrible troubles that they were burnt out, out of, and they have left the kind of the, the, the parts of the houses there so that people can go and look at them. But the, in the shrine now, we have five chapels. We have Chapel of Reconciliation, we have a chapel of um, adoration. We have the the um, apparition chapel, the old church, the parish church, and we have the basilica. Okay. Now, uh, one of the other things about this is not only that Knock is in the County Mayo, mm-hmm. but there are some other shrines that having to do with the earlier church in Ireland, like with St. Patrick. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, this area, well, as you know, the whole of Ireland really is, is uh, steeped in um, Christian, um, in, the, in the early Christian church and in uh, uh, very early Christianity. It goes right back to, uh, to uh, medieval times uh, and to the very, very beginning when um, St. Patrick came to Ireland in the year four, 441. Uh, he ascended... Uh, Croke Patrick. What's which Croke is, Patrick? Okay, <laughs> Croke Patrick. Croke is the word, it, it means mountain. And uh, not far from Knock, if a person takes a, a pilgrimage to Knock, they can also travel to Croke Patrick. Uh, Croke is a word, for, uh, Irish word for mountain, and, and uh, so it's the mountain of St. Patrick. St. Patrick ascended this mountain and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights up there. Now, um, was this before he began his missionary? Yes, it would be. It would be work. the way our Lord did before he began his public life. Now, um, since then, many, many people have have made pilgrimages up. We call it the Reek. A Reek is another Irish word for mountain. Uh, people ascend uh, the Reek um, in uh, very often in bare feet, and some even on their knees. It's quite rocky, and it's. Um, uh, People, like I said, people going up, for, 
it's penance going up in your bare feet. Believe me, Father, it's I'm penance. Sure. I'm sure it yes. is. Uh, and it's 640. I don't want it to walk in my driveway <laughs> with my bare feet. You know, so. It's 640 meters high. Now that'd be about 630 yards, 620 yards, something like that. Yes. Um, now the last Sunday of July is called Reek Sunday. It's the most popular Sunday to go on pilgrimage to Croke Patrick. And last, uh, the last one in the J July just passed, there were more than 20,000 people that ascended the Croke Patrick on that day. Um, like I said, many of them go in bare feet and some of them on their knees. When you get to the summit of Croke Patrick, you, we do the way of the cross outside and then have mass in the little chapel up there. Now, right... Another area that is another uh, very important point of pilgrimage that is in the area uh, is the Ballantubber Abbey. Uh, Ballantubber Abbey was set up by the King Cahal O'Connor of uh, no, no relation, I don't believe. Um, king, he's an ancient king of Ireland. He set up the uh, Ballantubber Abbey. He had it built for the friars. He had promised them and he had it built for the friars. Uh, now, it, that abbey is nearly 800 years old and it's the only abbey in Ireland, the only church in Ireland built by an ancient king that is still in continual use. So the Holy Mass is celebrated there daily. Are there still any monks over there? I, no, I don't think so, Father. Okay, so it's just a parish church at this yes, point? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, now, during the time of Cromwell and Henry VIII, the, the, uh, the um, roof to the church was burnt, to Ballantubber Abbey was burnt. But uh, miraculously, the, the roof over the sanctuary was saved. So even although the roof, there was a big hole in the roof, they continued to say Mass in the Abbey. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that Cromwell, after he won the war against the English king, yeah. uh, went over to Ireland and waged Pillage. a really, really brutal, brutal war against yeah. the Irish. Yes, he said, he actually made a statement that uh, these Irish people are crazy. He said, I have my guns, and when I point my guns in their faces, they hold up these beads, and they, do, they won't surrender. So the beads, that's the rosary beads. Right, right. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm not so sure the Irish were the crazy ones. He's the one who brought the cannons right. there in the first That's place. Right. Yeah. So he couldn't he, understand why the Irish people weren't weren't afraid of his of his guns. Yeah. 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 Well, the, this so the sense is that um, if a person goes to knock on pilgrimage, then there's. Uh, there's not only the visiting knock, but there's also this Krogh Patrick, yes. and as well as this uh, monastery. In the area. Yeah, they're all in the general area. It's a great place to visit, yes. Now, this is uh, going to be one of the other things that, um, you know, it's not just the Irish who have honored it. A number of the popes have honored That's it, right. like Pope Pius XII, and mm -hmm. uh, I think John XXIII, mm -hmm. Paul VI, John Paul II. Mm -hmm. Did the only one who actually went there though was Paul, John Paul II, right? That's right. In nine, it was it was fantastic. In 1989, John Paul came to celebrate the centenary of the apparition, and he was so happy to be in our Blessed Mother Shrine. Um, now, John Paul celebrated Mass outside. Uh, we still have the big papal cross right where he had celebrated Mass. Uh, there were nearly nearly uh, 500,000 people there. And after the Mass... And, and so the folks understand, Ireland only has how many pe million people? At that time, about three. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, out of three million people, 500,000 yeah. come to one Mass. That's right. That's, that's, that's right, a remarkable Father. percentage. That's right. And uh, after the Mass, he consecrated Ireland to our Blessed Mother. So, like, how can we go wrong? I know things have gone, uh, th there's problems in Ireland with re respecting the church. People have turned away from the church. And uh, How widespread is that, do you think? Um, it was fairly widespread, but I think, really, I think now, since we have a recession, I think things are turning around. So that when the economy was doing better, mm -hmm. A lot of people stopped going to church. That's right, Father. Uh, in 
in poverty, in terrible po in poverty, and in times of, of uh, recession, the people turned to God, whereas then when the European Union came in and the money, people turned to Europe. I see. So yeah. turning to Europe, turning to God. Europe, God. I think I <laughs> would stick with God. You know, I love Europe. Mm -hmm. I, I live there, and uh, I, I, I mm -hmm. loved it when I lived there, but I'm going to put my trust in God, I not in so. Europe. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Now, we would, what we're hoping um, is that more people will look into making pilgrimages to, to um, knock. Um, Are there good accommodations nearby? Yes. Oh, the, yes. There's a grand hotel. Um, it's, it has, uh, it's not, when I say grand, I mean it's good. It's a, it's a lovely place to stay. It's the Irish sense of grand. grand. It's not huge, <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a very good hotel. Uh, it, and the, the rates are certainly competitive. Um, there's lots to do in Knock. Like I said, we have the five churches. Uh, we have, it's, it's on a hundred acres of very beautiful uh, gardened uh, area so people can walk and, around and meditate and, and pray. Um, there's a lovely feeling in Knock. There's a deep, uh, d there's a deep spiritual atmosphere in Knock. It's something that I experienced in Knock that I haven't experienced in other Marian shrines. It's, it's informal. And like I said, it hasn't been uh, commercialized like some have. And it's very welcoming. All the people there are so welcoming and so happy to meet, meet people. And uh, I think that's, a, that's very important, too. You know, one of our own uh, famous archbishops had gone there, too, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, who himself of Irish oh, background. He just, yes. His family yeah. came from Boyle in County Roscommon which isn't a million miles away from, well, when we say that, I mean, it's not that far from not. Right, right. Yes. So, so a number of people have gone there on pilgrimage, and, and do you have to be Irish-American to go all, there? Not at all, not at all. So the Polish-Americans would be Absolutely. Invited. Oh, we've loads of really nice Polish people in Ireland now. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, They even have their own church in yeah, Dublin. This is uh, one mm -hmm. of the things, and uh, also, you know, th this message about knock was something that was brought into the St. Patrick's Day Parade That's in right. Ireland. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. That's right. Well, we just hand things over to our Blessed Mother and say, okay, we'll do what you want. You know, we're here to serve you. And, um, and of course, we know that our Blessed Mother always leads us to her son. But for the, fir the first year, we have been invited to, we were invited uh, this year to march in the St. Patrick's Parade. And it was fantastic because um, I was asking the parade commissioner and people, well, I hope when I get there, I'm going to have some strong, maybe, uh, gentlemen to help me carry this banner. It's six feet by four feet, and it's got these big, big, um, um, you know, poles to carry it with and all the brass. And so that was grand. Oh, they said, there's no problem. There's no problem. We'll have these, these lads all set up for you. Well, sure, when I got there and we were in formation, three ladies stepped up. Two young women and one of their mothers, Marion, Anne Marie, and Anne Marie's mom, and they and said it would be an honor for us to carry our blessed mother. So we have Manana Heron, women of Ireland, carrying Our Lady high down down Fifth Avenue in New York. And how was that uh, well received by the crowd? It's grandfather. When we came out onto Fifth Avenue, there were cheers. Uh, and and the, the girls were saying they had goosebumps. They had a lump, lump in their throat. One girl said, I have a big lump in my throat, carrying our Blessed Mother high down Fifth Avenue. And when we got in the front of um, St. Patrick's Cathedral, we were told to stop and turn the banner, and the, the bishops, uh, the, the rector of the cathedral and a bishop would bless the banner. So as we got in front of, in front of the St. Patrick's Cathedral, we turned the banner. They came running out into the, into, right into the Fifth Avenue, and we, took, we have photographs of it. They blessed us, and they blessed the banner. Well, that's nice. So it's fantastic, yeah. Well, that is nice. Yeah. And, in, you know, it's always fascinating to me how the St. Patrick's Day Parade has become a big issue for the politicians. They all want to be seen. Yes. But boy, oh boy, if we try to step on their turf, yes. they should like stepping on our turf. Yes. 
this should be a very religious thing. St. Patrick is not about, you know, uh, green beer and no. all sorts no. of nonsense of no. drinking. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's, that's absurd. Mm -hmm. It's about the evangelization of Ireland. Yes, that's right, Father. And to I'm, have the religious component to the St. Patrick's Day Parade is a great one to have. Yes, and, um, and Archbishop Timothy Dolan is very interested in having more Himself Catholic... Himself of the Irish persuasion. Exactly, yes, Father. Uh, he's very interested in having more Catholic content, Catholic and Christian content, in the the parade. Yeah. So we were delighted. And one of the bishops said, you know, really, really, our uh, Queen of Ireland should go first. Uh, preach it, sister. <laughs> the next time you make the, make the politicians walk in the back behind the horses yeah, they want and us, you guys go in front. Yes, they, they think they, they want us to lead the parade. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that was good. one bishop, so... Right now, we're just happy yeah, but to that be part one, of it. That one bishop is the Archbishop of New York, so... Well, no, it wasn't him, oh, Father. Wasn't I him. Have to, no, it was the bishop that came out and blessed the banner. Oh, okay. So Tell him to talk to people. He knows yes, people, I'm sure. Yes, yes, um, Another thing that's going on, besides Our Lady of Knox, is going to be a Eucharistic uh, oh. Congress in, uh, in Dublin. Mm -hmm. And the Eucharistic element of the vision was very important even mm -hmm. though it was silent mm -hmm. you know the lord appeared as a lamb yes. uh, who has been sacrificed and yes. that's a symbol of the eucharist yes tell us a little bit about this eucharistic con con congress well 2012 in june of 2012 we're going to we're going to host the international eucharistic congress in dublin i was talking to father kevin doran who is the general secretary of the uh, Congress. And I told Father Kevin that I was going to be coming on with you, Father Mitch. Oh, and yeah. he said to give you his best regards. Thank give you everybody very much. at EWTN his best regards. Thank you. We appreciate And that. we're hoping to see a lot of you in Dublin on pilgrimage to the Eucharistic Congress. Now, Knox Shrine will be pay, playing a part in that. When I was talking to Father Kevin, he had, uh, had made arrangements with the manager of Knox and the uh, Monsignor. Uh, Joseph Quinn, who is the parish priest of Knock, to talk about what part uh, Knock Shrine will play in the Congress. Now, what we're, we're hoping is that people will make pilgrimage to uh, Dublin for the Congress and then go on to Knock Shrine, where uh, the, uh, either the priest or the archbishop will celebrate Mass in Knock Shrine. How many hours away is it from... Uh uh, Dublin to Knock? Well, it's 135 miles. So it's not but, too bad. Well, it used to be rocky road. It used to be dirt roads. But now, since the EU, the only thing we, I can say that the, really that they brought to Ireland was the good roads. So, so, so it's, it's a pretty good road, although it's not a wide road. It'd be about two and a half hours or so. Uh, yes, at least. Yeah, at and least. then uh, <laughs> you will pass... Um, most beautiful scenery. Well, that's what everybody in luxury says coaches, and we yes, yes. So uh, I think it, it's a lovely trip from Dublin to uh, to Knock. I've made it many, many times, and um, we have a we have a, a good tour operator. They're um, experts in take Christian pilgrimages, especially to Ireland. Yes. So uh, if anyone is interested, they, all they have to do is go on to our website and Which we uh, will let me Let me read them. that for you. It's uh, www.iec2012.ie. That's the Congress. Father, so, that's the con Eucharistic Congress. Right. That's the, that's, that's, the, that's the one I've got here. So that uh, if you want to find out more about the Eucharistic Congress, mm -hmm. go to the www IEC2012.ie, and IE stands for Ireland. Yes, and the, uh, the Knock Shrine uh, website is www.knock-shrine.ie. So knock-shrine.ie. That's right. All right, so you can get to both of those places, That's find right, out more about those pilgrimages. We have to take a little break, but we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. We want to get your questions and your comments, as well as those of our studio audience here, so please stay with us.
Thank you. Welcome. Well, we have a really nice group of folks here. A nice group from, came from New Jersey. The priest who was celebrating Mass this morning uh, has brought a group, and there are folks who are with him from New York and Connecticut and other places. And we have folks from other parts of the country, as well as Canada, Hong Kong, and who knows where else. To, uh, even the Republic of Texas is represented here. So uh, we'd mm -hmm. love to have all of you come and join us if you get a chance. Uh, if you have a, an opportunity to come on pilgrimage here to EWTN, please contact our pilgrimage department. What you can do is call them at 205-271-2966. That's 205-271-2966. Or go to our website, www.ewtn.com. They'll help you with places you can stay, all sorts of uh, places around here, as well as up in Hansville. And they'll also give you schedules for when the masses are, programs that you can be in the audience, and tours. Uh, did you guys get a tour of the studios today? Yeah. Huh. Was that fun? Yeah. Good. And, and then also they'll let you know the places you can go eat. Uh, I, I was just last week over at uh, the place to get fried green tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You know, did you guys get, anybody get fried green tomatoes? No? Oh, you got to go. Don't, don't miss out on the fried green tomatoes. They're, they're good. So, and all the other great places to visit here in Irondale. So, uh, again, it's 205-271-2966, or our website is www.ewtn.com, and they'll help you with all sorts of info. You ready for some questions? Yep. All right, we have a caller on the line named Dan. Hello, Dan. Hi, Father. Where are you from? I'm from Connecticut. Great. And what is your question? Well, I have um, uh, a two-part question, probably also maybe even a three-part. My, my first question is, or my first part is, um, what criteria did the Church use to authenticate the apparition of Knock? Secondly, what exactly was the message? Was it, you know, one of reparation and penance, as we heard with uh, uh, the other apparitions? Was this specifically a message to the people of Ireland to hold steadfast? And thirdly, I'm sorry to say that here, in, uh, as far as I know, in, in this country, I don't know any parishes named for our, in honor of Our Lady of Knock. Could there be? Could you explain that, uh, Father Mitch? Probably you're in a better position to explain that. I don't know, but I'll okay. hang up and thank you for taking my questions. All right, so uh, let's start off with the f first question. What were the criteria that the church used for, for determining that Nock was authentic? Well, uh, the first criteria was the, um, the sworn statements of the witnesses. They were credible and they were reliable. Um, so that would have been first. And then another um, phenomenon that took place at the time was uh, like I said to you, Father, it was raining very hard at the time. And, uh, and yet, the gable end of the church, where the apparition took place, and the area where the, where the, the figures were, remained completely dry. So, so there was that you know, physical phenomenon, yes. And, yes. and everybody witnessed to it, plus the testimony of what happened during the apparition, yes. and that the witnesses all agreed. So. Yes. Fifteen witnesses from age six to seventy-five. So, so that so that was considered enough of a criterion. Yes. Uh, to, to have the church accept it. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the message? Well, the message um, is, like I said to you uh, earlier, uh, on the the message that we get from the the knock uh, from the the apparition at knock is that our blessed mother was there to encourage and to support her, her children who are suffering desperately. Um, another thing uh, is if you look at the, uh, the things that are under attack in the church, um, the, the family, so we had the Holy Family, our Blessed Mother so the, and the, the Holy Family appeared there. Yes, yes. Okay. So these are the things that uh, are under attack at the moment and, and, and have been for some time. But mainly we believe it was a... a, a um, an apparition of love and support, like our Blessed Mother did on Calvary. She said nothing, but she was there for her, her Divine Son. And Our Lady always leads us to her Divine Son. How about the third question? Why aren't there any churches named after Our Lady of Knock in the United States, or are there? Yes, there's a shrine in New Jersey, 
There you uh, go. That has the it ha the, that has the f the, the the figures, and um, and when we were in uh, in New, uh, going going around giving talks in New York and, and New Jersey, we were driven to this shrine to see the figures, and actually the figures came from Italy. They were made in Italy. So, so there, there is a sh at least one shrine of Our Lady of Knock There's here. There's also one in Quebec. And one in Quebec yes, as well. Yes. In Canada. That, that we know about now, there, uh, or that I know about, there could be more. And perhaps it's up to Dan to uh, help yes. inspire a priest to start a parish of Our Lady of Knock. Yes. You know, so the Irish Americans are going to have to get involved in that. Yes. And the oh. Polish. And well, the Polish American. Well, we've got Częstochowa covered. Right. You, you all can do knock. <laughs> uh, we have a question here from our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? I'm from Hensville, Father. Great. And, and uh, your question? Okay, first I'd like to say a blessed feast day of St. Clair to y'all, as we say here down south. And my question is uh, apparently, uh, this Marian apparit apparition at our lead up knock is the first and only recorded apparition where St. Joseph appeared, let alone St. John the Evangelist. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What is the popular conjecture or common explanation for this, uh, if I may say, spiritual phenomenon? Thank you so much. Thank Actually, you. that's something I didn't have time to, to get into. Uh, and what this lady says is, is correct, that a ver there's very, very few sightings uh, or apparitions of St. Joseph. I think there was one in Fatima where he appeared with our Blessed Mother. But um, it, it is quite, quite a phenomenon. Now, uh, St. Joseph was, face, was looking towards our Blessed Mother, and she was standing with her eyes up and her hands up in prayer. St. John the Evangelist was dressed as a bishop, and he had a book like he was preaching. And he was, he was facing more towards the Lamb and the altar. So there we have the Mass. Uh, so it's it's quite it's actually quite phenomenal, yes, to have the 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 uh, the three our Blessed Mother Saint Joseph and Saint John the Evangelist, uh, as well as the altar. And the what explanation do they give for this unusual combination? Um, well, it, I think that, um, Saint John was dressed as a bishop, as a priest, and I th and he he was pre he was prepared to say mass. So you could see there, there was the mass and the altar with the lamb on it. And yeah. St. Joseph was with our Blessed Mother. He was, he was there almost like, like the, the protector, looking with, with love and respect to her. And it's, it's like you, you yourself had said, that there's a certain element here of the Holy Family being represented yes. Yes. at a time when family is being threatened. Mm -hmm. So that to, to have St. Joseph there as the, yes. the, one of the patrons of fathers in particular yes. is a, a very important thing. Yes. Uh, we need that very much in our society. Very much, yes. very much. We have another caller. We have Kate on the line. Hello, Kate. Yes. yes Hi, where you, Thank where, you so much. Sure. Where are you from? I'm from Mississippi. Great. And what is your question? Well, you've, you've been answering it already. I was wondering how they discern who the other people besides the Blessed Mother were, and what the messages were from them. So, uh, and so you've really been answering my question before I, I was able to ask it. Well, but I want to thank you for your program. I watch you all the time. I've seen your live shows. I've been there, and you're wonderful. So is not wonderful, but your show is too. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Um, you know, Here's one of the things. How did you, could they tell it was St. John? And it's just like a bishop. How did they know it wasn't St. Patrick? Father, these were very simple Irish people. One thing they knew was their faith. They knew that that was St. John. He had the book he was, he was preaching, and he had a mitre, a small mitre on his head. And they knew it was St. John. So, and, yes. and they all, in the, you know, independently, because they were all interviewed independently. That's right. And they all recognized that it was St. Yes. John. Yes, yes. Well, okay. now the six-year-old child might have just given the descriptions, but the people knew. These were simple people. These were people that were into fantasies and making up things. Right, right. Yeah. These were people in hardship. And they knelt in the mud for two hours reciting the rosary. Now, in terms of the message... What message does St. John give at, at Knock? Well, he was preaching. 
from the book. Yeah, but did they hear what he was saying? No, no. no so, no. so there was no message that the people could well, hear. No, no. So this was a silent, yes, uh, silent. sense of of presence rather than of actual speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have another question from our studio audience. Sir, where are you from? I'm from New York. Great, and what's your question? Okay, during that time you said um, that there were several witnesses. Uh, 15. During 15 witnesses. So um, were there any manifestations? Um, what are the manifestations of all these witnesses during, during the apparitions? They were kneeling and praying for two hours. Now, the arch, we can't really uh, uh, look at, at the apparition without talking about the parish priest at the time was Archdeacon Kavanaugh. Uh, he was a very, uh, a, he was a hardworking uh, priest, worked tirelessly to look after his parishioners and his flock. Uh, he was very, uh, a very pious man, and he had, a, he had a very, always had a very strong devotion to our Blessed Mother and to the holy souls in purgatory. Now, uh, he, when it, when it was mentioned to him, and uh, unfortunately, Archdeacon Kavanaugh did not see the apparition, but he had no doubt in his mind. He knew these people, and he said these people had knelt in the mud and in the cold and the wind and the rain for two hours, gazing at the apparition. You know, if, if somebody were trying to make some advantage, you know, say, uh, trick somebody or make a name for themselves, they would probably choose a more comfortable time to do that. I think so. And, and the fact that they're kneeling in this pouring rain, not just a, uh, one of these, what do you call soft? No, it wasn't a soft day, Father. You know, it's, it's, it was, so it's, it was it's not one of these soft days. No. This is a day where, where mm -hmm. there's heavy rain and, and wind blowing. Right. And they choose to kneel down in that mud for two hours. Mm -hmm. If they were just making this up, they would have picked a nice sunny day. Mm -hmm. so, th th so that would have been more sensible anyway. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's another part of the authenticity yeah. of it. We have another question from our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? Steubenville, Ohio. Steubenville, Ohio. Yes. Great. Good to have you here. And what's your question? I have a more practical question because it sounds like it's kind of remote and everything. Do they have places nearby for pilgrims to stay when they go yes. there? Uh, we have the Knock Hotel. Uh, it's reasonably priced, um, and especially if there's a group, you can get a, you, you can get a special rate. Uh, there's a convent, uh, a convent nearby where people can stay as well, and there's a caravan park where people. By trailers. caravan park, uh, put that into English, trailers. American English. Trailers. So, yeah, so you can yes. bring little trailers. Yes. Know, uh, or rent what, what, them. Or rent. Them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and there's bed and breakfast places close by, too. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so there'd be plenty of places for people to be able to yes, stay. Yes, yes. Groups, it's very nice for groups to stay at the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that sounds like a good thing. Yeah. How big is the convent where they can stay? I'm not sure, but there'd be a good few rooms in the convent, okay. Father. Now, you mentioned before that Pope John Paul II had been over to Nock. Mm -hmm. Did he have any other reactions because I think he was already aware that there was, because of changes in culture, that sometimes the, the state of the church in Ireland mm -hmm. was in flux. Mm -hmm. So did he have any reactions to what was going on at Knock? Um, his message was uh, in, devo in having a devotion to our Blessed Mother, she will always lead us to her son. Yeah, which has been very much one of his standard approaches. You know, the, you mentioned before that he consecrated mm -hmm. the country to Our Lady of Knock. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that the Pope really did a lot, there's, there's even a whole dissertation on how often Pope John Paul, uh, every country he went to, he would dedicate that country to the Blessed Mother, put her under her mantle. Mm -hmm. That's right, under her protection, yes. Yeah. Yes, Father. Uh, and really, um, I know things aren't good in, in Ireland right now with respect to the faith. Um, a lot of people have stopped going to Mass, and the secular news media is just, uh, is just ruthless in attacking the Church. However, we still have the Angelus bell rung twice a day on Radio Telefish Aaron, our national 
uh, news, our national radio and television stations. So at, at noon and at 6 o'clock, yes, Father. the they angelus don't... bell rings. Yes, yes. And we still have no abortion in Ireland, thank God. Thank God. Uh, we also have major um, uh, rosary processions that go up the main street of the capital of Ireland, which is Dublin. So the traffic is completely stopped, and the police hold back the traffic and the, the, the rosary procession. Do uh, many people come out for that? Many people, Father, from all over Ireland, yes. So, so that yes. can still gather them together. And they, then we also don't have same-sex marriage in Ireland. They're working now on a kind of a, a civil union thing, but it will not be called marriage. Right. I don't know what's going to happen there. It's right. No, but that's you know the, 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 all these attempts to change and and even there you know the attempt to redefine what family is. In one sense, that's a, related to the message of that's Knock, right, which is yes. about the, the importance yes. of family. Yes, the family is under attack. Yes. Now, in in, in terms of. Uh, you know, s some of this dedication, I, I think it's important for people to understand that Ireland is not the only country that's been dedicated, you know, to Our Lady. Mm -hmm. uh, Pope John Paul really wanted to make sure that every nation mm -hmm. would have that. And, and one of the reasons he would travel to so many countries was partly to put the, 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 the nations under the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yes. You know, that, that's one of the things that uh, was a very strong concern of his because he saw that as a source of renewal. Is there much of that renewal going on in, in Ireland now related to uh, Marian uh, yes, aspects? Yes, yes. When, when Pope John Paul uh, visited uh, Knock, he brought a golden rose, a beautiful golden rose, and presented it to the shrine. And it's on display now in the shrine. And the reason, the significance of the beautiful golden rose, we wear a ro golden rose, is that when our Blessed Mother appeared in the apparition in Knock, where, the, where she had a, 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 a brilliant golden crown on, and where the crown met her forehead was a beautiful golden rose. Mm -hmm. So that was a significance. Uh, and you can also hear that in the, in the beautiful song written by Dana. Oh, yes. Uh, go, uh, um, golden Rose, Queen of Ireland. It's, it's a beautiful song. I've yes, heard her sing yes. it many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she does a great job mm -hmm. with it. Another aspect of, that I wanted to bring up with the popes, uh, I mentioned... Pope John Paul already, but what did Pope Pius the Twelfth and Pope Paul the Sixth and Pope John the Twenty Third? What, what did those popes have to say about Knock? I don't, re I can't recall anything specific. Okay. But they all have been in support and in contact with the uh, parish priest of Knock. Um, it's been an ongoing support of thing from the Holy See that they they do so they support. Uh, and uh, endorse, fully endorse. Yeah. Has uh, there been an official decree that this, that this is uh, worthy of belief? Oh, absolutely. In 1936, 1936. After the com there was a second commission, like I mentioned, in 1936, and it was right after that commission, yes, that it was, it was decreed by the Holy See. As, I, and it is one of the major Marian shrines of the world, Father. You know, and this is one of the things that uh, is very important to understand. No apparition has the same authority as, say, sacred scripture. No. no. You know, what the church, the church never says you must mm -hmm. believe in any one shrine, mm -hmm. not, not in Fatima, mm -hmm. not Lourdes, mm -hmm. not Nock, not Czestochowa, mm -hmm. no, no place. But it does say that these are worthy of belief yes. Yes. because of the evidence that they, that they see. Yes. And that that kind of worthiness of belief is something that evokes faith from people. And yes. that's one of the great things about these apparitions of the Blessed Mother. And I think you ignore them at your peril. Yeah. I mean, this is the Mother of God. Right. And yeah. Although it's not part of the deposit of faith, it's a very, very important devotion. Well, it's, it's one, one of the things that is, uh, I, I think, uh, an important element mm -hmm. is... It means that Our Lady, who began 
her own life as a Christian, yes, as an evangelist. Yes. You know, she went over to her kinswoman, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and she was the first evangelist. Mm -hmm. And she brought that news mm -hmm. about this child who's now in yes. her womb. Yes. And that that role of the Blessed Mother as an evangelist has really continued on okay. at Guadalupe and Lourdes and Fatima and so yes. many other places. Yes. And we, we should pay close attention to what's being said because we need that kind of evangelization from yes. the Blessed Mother. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now, one of the other things, too, is that the, um, the, the fruit that you see from these places, uh, that's, that's another component of you know, any apparition site, that there's, there's a fruitfulness that comes because it does evoke devotion. People start praying the rosary more, start going to Mass, and you have a, a chapel that's just dedicated to uh, the sacrament of confession. That's right. We have a, a, sac a chapel of reconciliation. Um, and, we, and then we also have, like I said, chapel of adoration. Um, we have the old chapel, the old church. We have the, the beautiful big basilica, which had to be built because the small church wouldn't hold the pilgrims that were coming. And we have, yeah. And, you know, one of the things that is the primary fruit of any evangelization, whether it's by Our Lady or by Archbishop Sheen or by any priest who, or nun or lay minister who comes along, um, one of the fruits is going to be repentance. Yes. You know, that's one of the things that you mm -hmm. definitely look for mm -hmm. because part of the message to the world is mm -hmm. to repent, that is to turn around conversion. From, yeah, conversion. A very important part of conversion is, uh, is reconciliation and penance. And, and then, of course, the reception of the Eucharist. Yeah. And the adoration. That, and so, so this is something that is, I, I think, a, a, a crucial uh, element because one of the things that I, certainly I, I'm well aware of from Fatima is that need to repent. The world has just got so many problems mm -hmm. and you know uh, that that's also the, the Ireland I guess maybe is going to be called to that same sort of repentance that the rest mm -hmm. of us are called to at Fatima. Yes Father I hope so. Um, in this day and age now if people have uh, if people have done something wrong and they're feeling guilty they're told they're given medication and they're given counseling whereas years ago we would go to uh, confession Right. And I remember there were, I heard that there was, there was one doctor that said that he could count on, his, on one hand uh, and he would have fingers left over of the, the practicing Roman Catholics that came to him. And this is a psychiatrist. Uh, yeah, because, Carl Gustav Jung. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you have the, you've got all the facts, Father. But I had heard this and I thought, wow, like what are we doing? W really what people need to be doing is going to confession. Sure, sure. Well, we have about a minute or so left. Okay. Any final last things that you want to, to cover? Uh, oh, yes, Father. Oh, um, I have enrolled you, or we have enrolled you in, in the Friends of Knock Shrine. Oh, thank you. Shrine. Uh, this, these, um, this entitles you, to, your intentions will be uh, remembered in two Masses a day for a year. These are the um, Friends of Knock. Uh, well, thank you, and I, I have... These are very, very uh, popular in NOC. People, oh, people can th enroll for those their can deceased see it, members can see or people. Uh, pictures of, mm -hmm. of the, uh, the statues that were there. Yeah. And uh, I definitely have an intention that, you know, for evangelization that yes. I really want to promote, um, trying, <clears throat> trying to get some uh, videos done on, you know, for the anniversary mm -hmm. of the Reformation to mm -hmm. present uh, a Catholic perspective on the Reformation. Yes, so uh, I'm going to definitely... And we look forward to seeing you on pilgrimage All right. in Knock. If... I'll try to get over there. Please, try God. We'll there. see you in uh, 2012. This is my Irish friend. Inshallah, God Thank will. you, Father. Well, thank you very much for being with us tonight. And thank you all. I want to give you my blessing. May Almighty God bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I just got some good news. You know, we've been talking the last month or so about something of a financial problem. We are back to even. 
you know, we were down $850,000 at one point. And you, your generosity has brought us back to being even. Thank you so much for that. Now, we still need you to help us stay even and maybe even a little bit ahead. So we don't want you to stop. As a matter of fact, again, we remind you, this network is brought to you by you. So keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill, and we'll be able to pay all of our bills and be able to get that done for you. God bless you, and thank you so much for your kindness.